Well, I'll tell you what, it was shirt sleeve weather a few days ago, and then we got snow, and now we've had a full sunny day all day today. Hardly a cloud in the sky, but the wind has been blowing. Temperatures in the mid 30s right now with the sun still up, and we got winds from uh, 20 to 40 miles an hour up here. I'm wearing my uh, poncho, not because it's raining or anything like that, but to keep the wind off of me, because that wind is just driving right through. Got my beast out here. I'm going to clip on my wide stance uh, uh, tent pole connectors, connect right to the beast. Wide stance because we've got this heavy wind. Okay, so we're doing the wide stance. If I wanted to do the standard one, I would go right here to these D-rings instead of here. Here, so you see I'm about a foot wider on each side. Well, we got some windiness here. I will tell you what. Okay, these are all shot corded together. Just lay them in the diagonal here. this up in the wind. That's the hardest time to put stuff up. Some kind of shelter when it's really windy. Okay. And I am going to use the uh, shock cord here. Because with the wind I want to Take advantage of some shock absorbing. I have to put a rock on that one. That ground is pretty soft. Something like that right there. Something like that right there. So that should tie down all my corners and my ends, especially that front end, I tied that down. Because that's the wind is just driving in really hard from that end. So that I'm making that wind go up over the top of my shelter uh, to protect me from the wind. What I've opted for here on the side is everything else all the way around is shock cord to the tent stakes. So. I can pull this down and stretch and hook it over that tent peg and now see I've got easy access into here on the side so what I'll do is just hook this loop over that tent peg and that'll hold it down hold everything in place we're down just above freezing point right now 33 34 degrees and the sun still has not gone down, so it's only going to drop lower. And uh, and the wind is still going 20 to 40 miles an hour. That's why that's why you don't want to have to depend upon fire for your survival, because it's uh, you can easily have a situation where 
like here where the wind is just too much. Even though I could start a fire, I mean, I might not feel any effect of it because of the wind. With the uh, poncho on, it blocks all the wind, so it does make it tolerable. And I got my, get my fire going here, warm things up, temperatures down in the, about 20, just a little over 20 this morning, and uh, high wind all night. The wind finally stopped, thank goodness. <laughs> this is a Super UL Poncho. I've had it on because it's been so windy. I've had it on as a windbreaker, really. If you look, I'm kneeling down, grinding around in the, on the ground, plowing my way through the brush and the branches of these trees and everything. Even though it's Super UL, it's still, it's still tough. I mean, that's how I use my gear. I don't worry about it. Ah, more firewood. You know, I don't mind using this thing, even though it's super light, it's still tough. I've been kneeling on the ground, pushing my way through branches in these trees to get wood. Underneath, Underneath the poncho, I got my fleece on. It's the uh, Vista G1 uh, camo pattern. Nice and warm. Combine the two of these and it's like I got a coat on. Yeah, a little more wood for the fire. I have plenty of coals for breakfast and such here. After a chilly night, I'm eager to warm it up. Spectacular scenery. Out into some amazing country down in there. All oh, those deep canyons eroded out. All right, they got it. Well, here's where I slept last night. I hooked that little tab around that stake. Then whatever I need to get in and out, I can just raise up like that and uh, get in and out. I slept like a log. The wind howling all around me and everything. I have the fire going, the sun coming up. It was a chilly night last night with all the wind and the temperatures down about 20. I have to look it up on a wind chill chart, but I imagine uh, with the wind, we're probably close to zero degrees Fahrenheit. Fortunately, I slept really well. I tell you what, sleeping on that, on the beast there, I tell you what, it felt like, that's like you got a heater underneath you. That thing was awesome. But I put a ball valve on there, so just like that, you got your hot water. The water heater is great uh, for groups of people. But I've just kind of found when I'm by myself, it'd just be more convenient just to drain out some hot water and occasionally use the funnel to fill the thing back up. Boy, quite the country out through there. Well, let's try out the new spigot. Filling her up. I think I'm gonna like, I think I'm gonna like this. That new deal on the water heater. The only thing I don't like is it's a little heavy kind of hanging out there because it's made out of brass. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I like about the the beast and the accompanying shelter setups you can do with it is that it allows you a, a lot of flexibility. You can string this up you know, 90 ways from Sunday. 
and you can have yourself all sorts of room, all sorts of uh, access, and yet be very simple. This thing with the profile, which it has, you know, I found it, you know, it handles 40, 50 mile an hour winds just like a breeze. It's probably the closest thing I would get to a tent. Well, I've got me a nice little trough cleared out here to rake coals in, into. What you think about when you're cooking over the fire with coals is that your coals become your burner, like a burner on a stove. All right, let's get this burner going here. Make some of those nice hot coals down into there. Then you can put your hand down there. Whoa! You can't keep your hand there for more than a second or so. You got probably 400 degree burner sitting there. Well, last week I didn't bring anything with me really for food. This week I brought more than enough. Got to go from one extreme to the other. An egg. About a little bit of milk. Oh, there's ice. There's ice in the milk. Imagine that. Whisk this stuff up a little bit here. Sprinkle a little cinnamon. Yeah, I got I got enough cinnamon. <laughs> And I need my spatula. There, you know what? Maybe I'll use my little cast iron fry pan. Maybe I'll fry me a couple. Of eggs. Maybe I'll fry me a couple of eggs while I'm at it. And a little oil. Looks like my fry pan's gonna need a little cleanup here. Well, of course, one of the problems with Putting cinnamon in the mix is the first piece gets a lot of it on it. Just a couple eggs. I'll probably just wind up scrambling them, I imagine. I can't imagine I'll have to be careful enough to be able to actually turn them. Pepper it up good. We're camping, man. Well, I think I've got I've got some hot pepper jack cheese here. So I think I'm going to just take me a look how much peppers in that thing. <laughs> I love that cheese. It's Gosner's out of Logan, Utah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set that there on top of there. What I could do to melt those coals, or that cheese, dump a little bit of some hot coals in that plate right there. All right, let's check it out here. Oh yeah. Now that's what I'm talking about right there. And I'll put it on this plate here. I put a few hot coals on top of there to uh, to help keep everything hot while I'm fi finishing up my last French toast there. What I want to do is put my last little thing of butter on here. I'll let that butter melt. I want it just to start melting over the French toast. Take a look at it here. Carefully. Oh yeah, there we go. The butter's melted. The cheese is still melted. Well, time to say grace and eat. And uh because it's still in the 30s out here. So this this uh, food will not stay will not stay uh, hot for very long. Okay, let's grab some of this egg here. That slice of pepper jack. <laughs> now it really hit the spot on that egg. Oh, it's nice. Whew. This is a good way to start the day, I'm telling you what. All right, some nice hot wash water. There we go. I should be able to clean everything up now. Let's see, I need a little scrubbing pad. In here and clean the edges of this pan first. I had to 
egg mix in it. Spatula cleaned up. Everything is ship shape in camp. So I believe I'll head out exploring. I wanted to go out there and check out that little valley, that draw, hollow, whatever you call it, of uh, ponderosa pine and other things. Well, so I see this whole area down through here is full of uh, ponderosa pine. Everything up here is cracks and crags and all that. And see, I go along here and then whoa then you're down in there so let's see i gotta holy cow it's down there about 30 feet gotta make my way through all the cracks here try to find a way down It's a ways down into all that stuff. Get down over there. I thought I might could get down through here, but this stuff just all drops down in there and I, it's like a maze in there. Kind of like a small version of a box canyon, but you can get yourself down in there where you can't get back out. There's a route down through it, I don't know. There might be cliffs that drop off, and I might only go so far. I've got no idea. See the big ponderosas? I never would have... Not that you never might see them, but... I wouldn't have thought of them being out here. So I was up on there a moment ago looking down. Yeah, this is just so strange out here on the desert. Having nothing over 20 or 30 feet tall. Then we got these big ponderosas up here growing in here. It's so out of character, it seems. There's a sizable tree. You just don't see anything out on a desert like this very much. Now the bark on these trees, when you scratch it, you're supposed to scratch it and smell it. My nose isn't working good today, unfortunately, but Scratch it smell. It's supposed to smell like butterscotch or vanilla. I don't remember which. It smells like butterscotch to me. What a maze of stuff I've got to walk, whoa, walk through here. This whole area down here is just a tangle of boulders and Fallen trees and limbs and what in the world I expected to find down in here. But I just obsessed. I had to come down in here. <laughs> That's the way exploring goes. You don't know what you're going to run into. Don't know what you're going to find. If anything. And we get down along here. Underneath a big rock overhang. I mean, my only way back is to go exactly the same way I came up here, I'm afraid. I don't like going back the same way I came, but sometimes I get in trouble by doing something different. Unless, I don't know if I might be able to get up on top there and then go all the way around the rim, maybe. I don't know. Well, let's see if this might have a way up. Uh, nope. <laughs> well, that might be a way to get up. I'm not sure. Well, so this looks doable here. Getting up on this. The only thing, I gotta make sure I don't do anything that I can't get back down this way. Because a lot of these areas like this, this might be in circle all around by a big crack that I can't make it over to the main part and I may have to come back down here so I got to make sure whatever I do I'm able to make it back all right I'm up I hate it through all this jumble fall here 
Now you've got to be careful with all the holes and everything there is around here with all the rocks being cracked. Because you know, one wrong step and you broke your leg or something. And I'm out here solo, which makes it even more exciting. So, uh, I want to stay within side of the rim here. There's a, a bank of radio towers over there for communication, whatever. They got line of sight out through there more than 100 miles in places. In a way, that was kind of a anti-climatic <laughs> expedition there. And uh, I thought I might find something, maybe a little bit of some lush growth down in the bottom, maybe. I was picturing maybe going down there and camping sometime, but I don't really see a reason to offhand. And I was walking along, headed back towards camp, and found this little area here. Let's check it out. Well, I'm right here. Well, let's check out the trail first. Well, let's see here. Oh, wow. It's a ways down there. Look at all those canyons all over. It shows how the San Rafael and all was formed and San Rafael was turned up on its edge almost vertical. That makes the San Rafael Reef. This sign has a lot of the history of the area, which is pretty darn interesting. My grandpa was part of this history out here. Not anciently, but you know, a long time ago. <laughs> I am enjoying the view. I just love it out here in the desert. I mean, it's you can just see it seems like forever. There's so many things to see out there. It's just crazy. Here's the uh, route down to some additional picnic tables that are down here in the cracks and boulders here. Let's just check this out, man. You know, if it's really hot in the summertime, which it gets out here quite often, <laughs> it might not be bad to picnic down in here. It might get out in the shade of the boulders and stuff. Let's just see what we got here, man. So here we are in here, nice little fire pit, fire pits for these tables. Ooh, this is kind of nice, look at this. You see I've got about 28 inches to the top right here. As, uh, as everything is currently configured. Because my straps and everything are adjustable, I can raise this. It'll shorten, it'll shorten it, but it will also raise it. So here we are at 40 inches. So we're up from 28 to 40 inches tall. So now you see, if I were inside of here, at this point I've got a shelter where I can easily sit up in. And I can center it, uh, right now I've pulled more on this side than that one, so it's closer to the foot of my bed than the head. I've got a little space there. But, you know, I can arrange that however I want. Anyway, because we're, we've made this uh, setup that goes along with the beast adjustable, so you can use different size gear, you can arrange it differently, you can, you know, you can make it taller, you can make it longer. So, if I make it longer, then the top comes down, the outsides come closer to the ground, which gives me more protection. Shade, for example, I've got shade here. If that's what I want and i got a breeze that can come through, hey, this works great. All right, now, I'm sitting at 56 inches here by putting the PD shelter tent tubes in here. Here's another way I'm using the, the uh, tent poles for the PD shelter. I plug those, see I can plug whatever I want in here into the beast. It's, it is, accepts all kinds of tent poles, whatever, 
whatever you want to work with. Now obviously I've got a quite a bit of space in here. In fact, I could configure this where you could put two beasts side by side under here and, uh, and make a canopy overhead. You know, the, uh, what you can do with this is pretty, pretty well limited just by your imagination and, and what, you know, what you can come up with. So we're just adapting a square flat tarp to be a tent shape. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know, it's not bad. All I did was drop the tent pole set by one section. I just, on the other side, I unplugged one section and folded it over, plugged it back in, so I dropped it by 13 inches. There's our lower profile. Compare, you compare this with a few minutes ago when I had the taller setup. Okay, now is this not amazing? Now I've dropped it some more. I'm just about at head height here. You know, which is okay, which means I can sit up. And uh, I could I could still tweak this in a minor way because uh, these straps right here, all I gotta do is pull them a little bit tighter. It'll arch this up. It'll bring the ends in a little bit. It'll push the top up a little. So let's say I wanted to be three or four inches taller than I am. I just pull in on those adjustable straps I get a little more height on the ceiling, and uh, and I'm good to go. I could sustain some pretty good weather in a low pri in a low profile setup like this, and uh, and um, this would really be a a great little deal right here. You see how low we're getting to the ground here, all the way around. Now you could put a couple beasts side by side in here, and you could snap them together, and you could. <laughs> And you could still use the snaps. You're going across two of them instead of one. And now you got a whole nother setup you can do. We are opening up a whole new world here with the beast and the canopy setups. I mean, you know, this is a, we got a 10 by 10 footprint here. This thing is huge. Put another into the side here, maybe another in there. And I'll be under the same canopy right here. All right, let me show you some more things that you can do with the beast. Um, if I take this pole right here and I cut it off, say, I don't know, right here. All right. And I'm going to knock those little deals there off a little bit. Try not to cut the tarp, right? <laughs> I could do it. I could fix it, though. And we'll change this setup completely in a matter of moments here. Now, ideally, I should use a, I should use one of those tent stake bags, right? But I don't have one sitting right here. Looks like I need to bring that out a little here. Now this big open area is more stable because I've moved my pole back here and pulling back here so it's pulling tension all the way around like this. So it's pulling down I've got more sides on here. So, so that makes the shelter more closed in Everything else all the way around is pretty close to the ground. Now you see, this is a 10 by 10 tarp. I've got another tie-out tab right here. So I'm going to move that other pole right to here. And you watch what happens when I do that. So, now take a look what we just did. We have closed this thing way in. Look how much space we've got inside of there. That is enormous. An enormous amount of room that we've got inside of there. And uh, and and with this closing it down like that, that gives me a more weather shielding ability. The beast is an option that really 
can transform how you camp. Uh, you don't have to confine yourself to a tent. You can use, it allows you to use your tarp that you may already have. You might already have one of our tarps. And it makes it so you can use it in a whole other way than you've been using it before. And you can take advantage of the beast as a, as a pad to lay on. It transforms, transforms the whole way of doing things when you go to the ground uh, sleeping out camping. I'm really just trying to quickly show you a bunch of different configurations that you can put this shelter into in just a few moments. But you see, I've still got a pretty good amount of space in here. Like I say, I can, I can sit up. If you're a little taller than me, just pull in on the straps all the way around just a little bit. It'll pull the ends in a little bit and it'll shove the middle up. You can't do that with a tent. I mean, a tent is made to be whatever size they made it to be. You can change it pretty much to however you want it to be. And, uh, you know, you just got to think about, well, how can I change this? And you just do it. So basically what happens here is the beast becomes kind of your anchor point for your tent pole system. Now, instead of saying, well, I got a tent that's shaped like however it's shaped, you know, you see, I, I just, I went from this morning, I went from, I went from a HSS, which is the same thing as a PSS XLX wide poncho. I went from that to a 10 by 10 tarp, a flat 10 by 10 tarp, and I've got a whole shelter out of it. You know, it's a fantastic deal. It's a way for you to really uh, configure your camping setup to your needs. You, know, you set it up how you want to. You set it up in the space you have allotted. You configure it however you got to, to make it work wherever you're at. I mean, what else can you do that with? Wilderness Innovation, we are all about adjustability. We want you to be able to set your stuff up however it works best for you. Obviously, there's some limits because you can't, you can't actually do everything, but we like to get you as close as we can. And, uh, you know, so I mean, why not? This makes a super nice, nice shelter. And uh, it's a whole nother way to use your PSTO tarp. Or I've done it with a PSTM, which personally, I think the PSTM might be even a little bit better than, well, I don't know. This is pretty nice right here. <laughs> the PSTM just a little bit, a little bit smaller, a little easier to kind of configure out, but actually we're pretty well dialed in with this one. So if you got a PSTL, if this works for you, you're good to go. We're just getting started with the beast. The stuff you can do with the beast is going to blow your mind. And look how I changed the configuration, what, three, four times? I think I changed it four times. And because uh, let's see, we were high. Then we came down one, so that's two. We came down another, and that's three. Oh, then we moved the pole in, that's four. We moved the pole in again, that's five. I just showed you five setups for the beast canopy uh, set with a 10 by 10 tarp. I showed you five setups in the last little bit right here. I was just walking by here, and I was noticing the shape of this uh, tarp setup. It's the same shape as, uh, if you watched our video, it's been many years ago. I showed how to set up our PST tarp, the 7 by 7 foot tarp. There's a way you can set that up over your poncho when you set up as a hammock and get good coverage. And this is it. It's called the Scorpio, or the uh, Stingray setup. Because at certain angles it kind of looks like a Stingray. Kind of that's the back fins and then there's the wings and then there's the front edge of it sort of. And this kind of setup works really well in the wind and the weather. Because it, it tends to shed and deflect the winds and stuff like that pretty well. There's 27 total tie outs. I mean you got tie outs galore. But you've got, you've got uh, 24 of them around the perimeter. 
So let's say you got, got into some bad weather or whatever. You got 24 tie outs built into the tarp to anchor this thing down. All right, let me show you a little something I got going on here. Baby back ribs in the Dutch oven. Getting finished cooking up. I'm, I'm hoping this all works out really nicely because I'm getting kind of hungry. I've done, I've, I done worked up a, I done worked up an appetite. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. Take a peek at this. Oh yeah, it's cooking nice. I think we're, I think we're about done with this phase of it. Ah, look at those ribs. They are just gonna be so juicy and so nice here. All right, time to rack them up. Okay, I'm gonna pull these coals over. Okay, now these cooking irons, they come apart for when you need to take them apart. So, we are going to do just that. I'm going to put those there. Something like that. So I can lay my ribs on here to finish roasting them up. Take these steaming ribs off of here. And gonna lay that up there. Lay that one up there. This one's a little bigger here. Lay that one up there. Yeah, you can just hear those ribs roasting. Listen to the crackle. Those are going to be good. They don't really need to cook them because they cooked in the Dutch oven. All I'm doing is finishing them off here. All right, I'm going to uh, take two of these and wrap up in some tin foil I've got over on the truck bed. Wife Shauna just loves ribs. I'm gonna take her some home. Wrap them up in the tin foil for her. All right, I'm gonna go eat this one right here. Okay, we're gonna cut us a little rib off of here. The bad thing is I'm gonna have to eat fast because the weather's cold. The air is getting cold. So it's gonna cool off pretty fast. <laughs> oh man. That is a treat. It's liable to get messy before I'm all done here. Ah, ribs are so tender. I kind of slow cooked them in the Dutch oven, really. I was busy doing other stuff, so I didn't want to put the Dutch oven on too high of a heat. So. So I just kind of cooked over time. I gotta say, it's good. <laughs> this is living, man. This is how I roll right here. This is how I roll. Still going at it. Number three. Well, I know they're baby ribs, but they're still good. <laughs> but that wind is getting brisk. I'm gonna have to put a I'm about to put a sweater on over here, a hoodie. But I gotta eat this first, cause it'll get cold in about 10 minutes, this will be cold as ice. What I should have done, what I do sometimes is I take my cast iron and, and I'll actually leave the food in the cast iron when it's cold. And the cast iron will keep it warm longer. But. 
I'm already cleaning up the cast iron, so too late for that. These ribs are like perfect. Absolutely perfect. Finishing off my last one. This is still hot though, that's cool. Cool. <laughs> still hot, so that's good. I was worried about eating the last one cold. Well, I got a little bit of soap in the bottom. And a little bit of soapy water for dishes here. Get everything cleaned up.